the Gilded Age. Or the Age of Innocence. We're getting hooked, addicted. That is, we're watching this. I mean, if we've seen two and then another episode. Um, we'll be interested um, to know what happens next. Uh, which is part of the problem. Uh, generally, I try and avoid the series because you can find that uh, again, you've seen one, second, uh, suddenly <laughs> you're watching what was that? The Young and the Restless, which has been on. Well, it stopped. Ten years ago, but still, it had been on for twenty. It never ended. A million episodes, I don't know. And the jokes with the soap operas that everybody has to marry and have an affair with everybody else. Uh, shocking, I guess that. Cheating and everything. This is not to say that. The Gilded Age is a bad uh, production. On the contrary, it is lavish on some levels with a perfect, maybe, the recreation of, of um, the atmosphere, the architecture and uh, costumes and all uh, belonging to the Gilded Age, which was what the end, I think, towards the end of the 19th century, last decades there. Anyway, um, a time of rising capitalism. Mm, it might be the middle because uh, our Mr. Russell, uh, the rich upcoming uh, businessman, wants to build uh, another railway station. And there's a conflict there because uh, uh, local officials uh, get in on the act. Uh, they know they will pass a law for this, so they buy shares before that at a low price. Once the, the project is known, poof, they, they can make a profit, but then they want a second portion. So they cancel the law and the shares drop. And Mr. Russell is in danger of losing well, everything. So there's a, there's a lot of tension, and I'd say this is maybe at the center of the action in this episode. So he wants revenge. I mean, you put me in this position. I didn't see this coming. Huh? Okay, so he buys his own stock, and then these local officials have to come begging, literally, and kneeling again. Uh, physically <laughs> in front of Russell, who wants them to uh, to uh, get punishment for something else too, because the his wife was mentioned that he was not had been insulted. She wanted to have this special night. Then she wanted to have the ballroom used. They have a ballroom, and no. Uh, the ladies of the real aristocracy, you know, the old families, rejected this upstart, this Nuforish Arifist. And so she was crying. And I said, this is uh, clearly an invitation to think about money and its connection with happiness, with satisfaction. There's a phenomenon that you've mentioned, hedonic adaptation, explained in. Uh, Others in uh, the myth of myths of happiness uh, by Sonia Lubomirsky and also stumbling on happiness by Harvard professor Daniel Gilbert. With that, we, we think we'd, we would be happy if only we were to move to California, Caribbean, Pacific Island, but then once there we adapt. And we adapt to most everything. Let me not go, uh, let me stop on this path and um, try and return and say that. Uh, yes, we see unhappy people here with, with money. It's also true that, on the other hand, uh, money is important that offers you uh, comfort. Uh, and then once you don't have it anymore, or you're in danger,
danger of losing it, as it happens with these officials. Oof, it can be apocalyptic. Uh, and uh, indeed, the, 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 the study has looked at the threshold. So in America, some years back, maybe more than 10, it was established that uh, the, the, there's a level set at about 60,000 or so in Alabama, Mississippi, the poorest states in the US, and maybe twice that, 20,000 per year as an income in San Francisco, which has to be adapted and increased for inflation. Um, so this was the level at which people could say, okay, that's comfortable, uh, this uh, level of income assures books to read, food, of course, and some decent pleasures, after which, or above which, uh, with more money, and much more money, you can't see sensible, important increases in happiness level. Uh, and then there's the, also the test, the research, I've mentioned with uh, before, uh, winners of lottery prizes in excess of a million dollars. For a few months, uh, for a few months, they see uh, boosting uh, well-being, but then after that, it flattens. It comes back to the base level of happiness. So, uh, big win, yes, an increase, but for a few months. The upside of this is that uh, we also adapt to unhappy events, except cases where it's difficult to adapt. Unemployment, the loss of a dear one, loud noise. Give it age. Yes. Looks like we're going to watch this for some time.